Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We have these two related integrals, one of them involving the dilogarithm, the other involving the square of the inverse hyperbolic tangent function. Both integrals are related to this sum over the positive integer n of minus 1 to the n minus 1 over n cubed times the binomial coefficient 2n choose n. This binomial coefficient is equal to the factorial of 2n divided by the factorial of n squared. If k is a non-negative integer, then gamma of k plus 1 is equal to k factorial. We can write down the square of n factorial as gamma n plus 1 squared. This factorial can be written as gamma of 2n plus 1. Gamma of z plus 1 is equal to z gamma of z. Gamma n plus 1 squared is gamma n plus 1 times gamma n plus 1, which can be written as n gamma of n. Now we can reduce the power in the denominator to 2. We have the beta function beta of z1, z2 equal to gamma of z1, gamma of z2 divided by gamma of the sum z1 plus z2, 2n plus 1 is n plus 1 plus n. We can write down this part as beta of n plus 1 and n. When the real parts of z1 and z2 are strictly positive, we can write down the following integral representation of the beta function, integral from 0 to 1, t to the z1 minus 1, 1 minus t to the z2 minus 1. We apply this idea here, beta of n plus 1 and n can be written as integral t from 0 to 1, t to the n, 1 minus t to the n minus 1. Swapping the order of integral and infinite sum, we get summation over positive integer n of minus 1 to the n minus 1, t to the n, 1 minus t to the n minus 1, all divided by n squared. We can multiply and divide by 1 minus t. This power now is n. We can also put minus 1 here and change the power here to n. We have summation n from 1 to infinity, minus t times 1 minus t, all to the power n. Downstairs, we have n squared. For magnitude of z less than 1, the dilogarithm of z is summation n from 1 to infinity, z to the n, divided by n squared. This sum here is the dilogarithm of minus t times 1 minus t. This minus sign is this minus 1 here. We have integral t from 0 to 1. In the denominator, we have 1 minus t. In the numerator, we have the dilogarithm. If we change t to 1 minus t, the argument of the dilogarithm is the same, t squared minus t. Downstairs, we get t. This integral is this summation times minus 1. Now we make use of an integral representation of the dilogarithm. We have this integral x from 0 to 1, x to the a, log x to the b dx. Using this substitution, we find that this integral is minus 1 to the power b times gamma of b plus 1. In the denominator, we have a plus 1 to the power b plus 1. Let's apply this result to this integral here. t from 0 to 1, x, log t, all to the power n, divided by 1 minus xt. Magnitude x is less than 1, and n is a positive integer. The magnitude of xt is less than 1, and we know that if the magnitude of z is less than 1, we can write 1 over 1 minus z as summation g from 0 to infinity, z to the power g. 1 over 1 minus xt can be written as summation g from 0 to infinity, x to the g, t to the g. Let's do term by term integration. We have integral t from 0 to 1, t to the power g times log t to the power n. This is a function of the index g multiplied by x to the g plus 1. And we sum over the non-negative integer g. By this result here, this integral is equal to minus 1 to the power n gamma of n plus 1 divided by g plus 1 to the power n plus 1. Gamma n plus 1 is n factorial. We can change g to g minus 1. Now we have a sum g from 1 to infinity. We take minus 1 to the power n n factorial outside. The sum is x to the g divided by g to the n plus 1. This is the polylogarithm of order n plus 1 and argument x. Using n equal to 1, we get that the dilogarithm of x is integral t from 0 to 1, x log t, divided by x t minus 1. In our integral of interest, the argument of the dilogarithm is x squared minus x. We replace every x here by x squared minus x. We get a double integral with respect to the variables t and x. Let's interchange the order of integration so that we carry out the integral with respect to x first. The outer integral is t from 0 to 1, log t. We take t from here as a common factor. The inner integral is x from 0 to 1, x squared minus x over x. That's x minus 1. Downstairs, we have x squared minus x minus 1 over t. Let's focus on this inner integral. Multiply and divide by 2. We have 1 half. The numerator becomes 2x minus 2 written here as 2x minus 1 minus 1. 2x minus 1 is the first derivative of the denominator with respect to x. The integral of this part is 1 half log x squared minus x minus 1 over t. We also have minus 1 half integral with respect to x of 1 over x minus 1 half squared. 
this gives us x squared minus x plus 1 over 4. The remaining part in the denominator is minus 1 over t minus 1 over 4. This can be written as the square. Between brackets, we have i times the square root of 1 fourth plus 1 over t. The antiderivative of this function of x is 1 over this part, the inverse tangent function of x minus 1 half over this part. We get the same value here if x is set to 0 or set to 1. This term disappears. We only have this term here. In this part, when x is set to 0, we get minus what we get if x is equal to 1. So when we use the limits of integration, we get 2 times 1 over 2 minus 1 over i, which is this i here. Then this part, 1 over square root 1 fourth plus 1 over t, the inverse tangent function of 1 over 2i times this square root. We have that the inverse tangent of minus i z is equal to minus i. The inverse hyperbolic tangent function of z, we can write this part as the inverse hyperbolic tangent of 1 over. We bring this 2 under the square root to get 1 plus 4 over t. Multiplying the numerator and denominator by the square root of t, we get the square root of t divided by t plus 4. This minus i times i is unity. The antiderivative of this part is the square of the inverse hyperbolic tangent function of the square root of t over t plus 4. Note that if we differentiate this function, we get 2. Then what we have in the bracket, the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic tangent function is 1 over 1 minus the square of this part. The derivative of the square root is 1 half, the square root of t plus 4 over the square root of t. Finally, the derivative of this ratio is 4 over t plus 4 squared. If we multiply and divide here by t plus 4, we get t plus 4 divided by t plus 4 minus 4. That's 4, 2 and 1 half, 4 and 1 fourth go away. We can use this t plus 4 to reduce the power here to 1. The remaining terms are 1 over square root t, square root t plus 4, times the inverse hyperbolic tangent function. Let's do integration by parts. When we use 1, this is equal to 0. When t tends to 0 from above, log t tends to minus infinity, and this function tends to 0. We can obtain the limit using the squeeze theorem. The inverse hyperbolic tangent of z is 1 half log 1 plus z over 1 minus z. We can write down this part as log 1 plus the square root of t over t plus 4 divided by 1 minus the square root of t over t plus 4. For alpha greater than 0, the natural logarithm of alpha is less than or equal to alpha minus 1. Applying this inequality to this logarithm, we have an upper bound, which is this argument, minus 1. This upper bound is equal to 2 times the square root of t over t plus 4. Downstairs, we have 1 minus the square root of t over t plus 4. Multiplying numerator and denominator by the square root of t plus 4, we get 2 times the square root of t divided by the square root of t plus 4 minus the square root of t. This is a non-negative quantity, and this is its upper bound. Multiply both sides by minus the logarithm of t, and t is between 0 and 1. If t tends to 0 from above, this part here tends to 2. What about minus log t times t? This can be written as minus log t over 1 over t. As t tends to 0 from above, we are in an infinity over infinity situation. Applying L'Hopital's rule, the limit of this quantity is the limit of the ratio of the first derivatives. Upstairs, we get minus 1 over t. Downstairs, we get minus 1 over t squared. This limit is equal to the limit as t tends to 0 of t, which is 0. This part disappears. The integral involving the dilogarithm is equal to minus 2 times this integral involving the square of the inverse hyperbolic tangent function. In this integral, let's do the change of variables. x equal to the square root of t over t plus 4. This implies that t is equal to 4x squared over 1 minus x squared. dt is 8x dx divided by the square of x squared minus 1. When t is equal to 0, x is equal to 0. When t is equal to 1, x is 1 over the square root of 5. After simplifying the integrand, we get minus 4, integral x from 0 to 1 over the square root of 5, the square of the inverse hyperbolic tangent function of x. In the denominator, we have x times 1 minus x squared. Rewrite this as minus 1 half log 1 minus x over 1 plus x. Minus half squared is 1 over 4. So we can eliminate this 4 here. Let's use another substitution. y equal to 1 minus x over 1 plus x, which means that x is equal to 1 minus y over 1 plus y. When x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1. When x is equal to 1 over the square root of 5, y is the square root of 5 minus 1 over the square root of 5 plus 1. Multiplying and dividing by the square root of 5 plus 1, we get 4 upstairs. Downstairs, we get the square root of 5 plus 1 squared. y is equal to 1 over the golden ratio squared. 1 minus x is 2y over 1 plus y. 1 plus x is 2 over 1 plus y. The integral of interest is minus 1 half integral y from 1 over the square of the golden ratio to 1 of log y squared times 1 plus y over y times 1 minus y. This part here can be written as 1 over y plus 2 over 1 minus y. Split into two integrals. The antiderivative of this function is 1 third log y cubed. Using the limits of integration, 
this integral is equal to minus 4 over 3, the cube of the natural logarithm of the golden ratio. Let's do the indefinite integral of log y squared over 1 minus y. If u is equal to 1 minus y, we get minus the integral with respect to u of the square of log 1 minus u over u. This is d log u. Integrating by parts, we get minus log u times the square of log 1 minus u plus integral log u, then the derivative of this function with respect to u, which is 2 log 1 minus u times minus 1 over 1 minus u. We can rewrite this part here using the variable y. In this integral, we do the change of variables v equal to 1 minus u. We get 2 times the integral with respect to v of log 1 minus v log v divided by v. The dilogarithm of v has this integral representation minus u from 0 to v log 1 minus u over u. The derivative with respect to v is equal to minus log 1 minus v over v. Integrating by parts, we get minus log v, the dilogarithm of v, plus 2. Integral with respect to v, the dilogarithm of v, times the derivative of log v, which is 1 over v. In terms of y, v is equal to y. This part here is minus 2 log y, the dilogarithm of y. This integral is the trilogarithm of y. The antiderivative of this function of y is this function here, plus the integration constant. We need now to use this antiderivative with the limits of integration. Using 1 over the golden ratio squared is not problematic in any part here, but when we use 1, log 1 is 0, and log 1 minus y tends to minus infinity as y tends to 1 from below. We can obtain the limit by applying L'Hopital's rule. We have limit as y tends to 1 from below of minus log 1 minus y over this logarithm to the power minus 2. The ratio of the first derivatives is 1 over 1 minus y. Downstairs, we have minus 2 log y to the minus 3, 1 over y. This tends to 1. We can take 1 over minus 2 outside. We have the limit as y tends to 1 from below of log y cubed over 1 minus y. Applying L'Hopital's rule again, the derivative of the numerator is 3 log y squared times 1 over y. The derivative of the denominator is minus 1. Now, when y tends to 1, we get 0 because of this log y here. When we use the limits of integration, we get this function. Note that when y is equal to 1, the dilogarithm of 1 is zeta of 2, but it is multiplied by log 1, which is 0. We get 2 times the trilogarithm of 1, which is zeta of 3. We also need the dilogarithm and trilogarithm of 1 over the golden ratio squared. In previous videos, we obtained the dilogarithm of 5 to the minus 2. We also obtained this functional identity satisfied by the dilogarithm and that one satisfied by the trilogarithm. Let's take this functional identity, rewrite it using the variable z, divide both sides by z, and integrate from 0 to x. This integral is the trilogarithm of x. If we use here the substitution, u equal to minus z, dz over z is du over u. We get the integral u from 0 to minus x, the dilogarithm of u divided by u. This is the trilogarithm of minus x. Here we use the substitution u equal to z squared. We end up with this integral here, which is the trilogarithm of x squared. The trilogarithm satisfies this functional identity. One fourth of the trilogarithm of x squared is a trilogarithm of x plus the trilogarithm of minus x. Now let's make use of this functional identity, which is valid when x is less than 1. We use a particular value of x, which is 5 to the minus 2. 3 minus the square root of 5 divided by 2. 1 minus x is 5 squared minus 1 over 5 squared. 5 squared is 5 plus 1. So 1 minus x is 1 over 5. We also need to obtain the value of x over x minus 1. This is 1 over 1 minus 5 squared. This 5 squared is 1 plus 5. x over x minus 1 is minus 5 to the minus 1. We have the trilogarithm of 5 to the minus 2 on the left-hand side. These two terms give minus between brackets the trilogarithm of 5 to the minus 1 plus the trilogarithm of minus 5 to the minus 1. Using this identity here, this bracket is equal to 1 fourth the trilogarithm of 5 to the minus 2. We can move this to the other side to get 5 over 4, the trilogarithm of 5 to the minus 2. Here are the remaining terms after simplification. Multiplying both sides by 4 over 5, we get this expression for the trilogarithm of the golden ratio to the minus 2. Knowing the values of the dilogarithm and trilogarithm evaluated at 5 to the minus 2, we can now obtain this integral here. It turns out that many terms cancel. From this part, we get 4 pi squared log 5 over 15. When this trilogarithm is multiplied by 2, we get minus 4 pi squared log 5 over 15. We get the cube of the logarithm of the golden ratio multiplied by 8 over 3. And 4 over 3, this is 4, and we have minus 4 here. The surviving term is zeta of 3 multiplied by minus 2 plus 8 over 5, which is minus 2 over 5. Our sum of interest, which is minus this integral, is equal to 2 fifths of zeta of 3. The integral involving the square of the inverse hyperbolic tangent function is equal to zeta of 3 over 5.